Hello everybody, welcome back to some Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, Descent into Both a furnace. Uh, well, you know what, ironically, we haven't seen either of those in quite some time. But it is the game, uh, all the same. And maybe we'll run into that sooner than later. So uh, Maybe tonight. <laughs> well, tonight, tonight's going to be extra special. Tonight we, we're going back to some, some roots of D&D, but uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not going to go into detail about that. We're going we're gonna to see that live. So let me, let me ask this first. Uh, who remembers what the hell happened last time? No. This is, we've been off for like uh, two what, or three weeks. What, what yes. didn't happen last time? Oh, sounds like you really, what? really, oh, I, all right, I hear that tone. Let's see, you got it? What, what went right last time? I mean, you're live. <laughs> Somehow. It's, it's good stuff. So... <sighs> last time... Uh, we, we decided to, uh, embark, uh, and deploy our plan or lack thereof, uh, to infiltrate Bitter Breath's, uh, compound because, uh, we were, uh, working with Smiler who just as a side note, I didn't care, didn't care for him. Didn't care for our boy Smiler. I didn't, I didn't trust him. Uh, we had the halfway plan of having a team, team alpha and team beta and team alpha was, uh, going to do donuts in the vehicles outside and dodge the cannons and distract and bring out, uh, all of the, the enemies inside the fortress while we ninja our way in, sneak in team beta going in and, uh, you know, steal all their soul coins. So, uh, we get in position, uh, we analyze everything to the point of, uh, a bit of, a little bit of insanity, I would say. Um, <laughs> especially based on the, how things actually ended up going. Um, Team Beta, we got in position to infiltrate from the side. Team Alpha, uh, instead of doing donuts, just, uh, ran straight through the front gate and wrecked the car and flipped it, and Team Alpha was stranded on the inside with a, uh, small little elephant corpse flopping around on the inside of the cabin as well. Uh, they start fighting. We don't know exactly, Team Beta doesn't know what's happened to Team Alpha at the moment, but we climb up the wall, we see... Uh, Elgin and we see Stab literally fighting for their lives against like 30 hobgoblins and a giant monstrous uh, demon devil thing uh, and we try to help uh, we are shut down very quickly by a fireball thrown up to us which uh, completely incapacitates me and causes my darkness spell to go away which then renders Elgin and Stab right back in the open again. Uh, we we lose that fight pretty quickly. That that went south uh, about as fast as it could. Uh, we were bound and brought down uh, to the car where we were interrogated by Hobgoblins and Bitter Breath. Meanwhile, Smiler, say what you will about him, I guess, but the man's going to stick to his plan. So he tries to, like like uh, Burger King Sneak King his way into the uh, hut still and steal the whatever he was going after. I assume it's the soul coins. Uh, he gets caught. Bitter Breath brings him out in front of us and stabs him through the neck and tosses his lifeless corpse to the side. Good job, Bitter Breath. Uh, and we start uh, trying to figure out how we're going to talk our way out of uh, being murdered in front of an entire camp of hobgoblins. So uh, we talk our way out of dying um, like in the immediate moment. Uh, and instead we are sent with our lifeless uh, elephant uh, back into the waste with no vehicles because they took them. Uh, no supplies with the exception of what's on our back. And all of us, I think probably clinging to life by a thread. Yeah, yeah, that's about where you're at. You can have inspiration. That's good, 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 solid recap. 
uh, things don't always uh, work out the way we plan and we end up without a vehicle and wounded and beaten and out in the open plains of Avernus. So yeah, 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 yeah. you got inspiration. Uh, before Thanks, we Dad. begin, uh, anyone anyone got anything you wanna you wanna mention? Or you got any questions about uh, what's happened so far? Are you guys good? Mm. I'm good. So far, so clear. <laughs> okay. No well, questions at present. In that case, let's go ahead and head over to the game. So, as stated, you guys are just now leaving Bitter Breath's camp. Your, uh, oh, let me get some appropriate music. Here you go. This is a perfect soundtrack for this. You are leaving the fort behind, kind of uh, limping a bit, just trudging away, not looking back. Uh, you hear chatter and a bit of chuckling in the towers behind you as you're leaving, uh, but you don't turn and look. You proceed on and trudge and trudge until the fort becomes distant. You guys march on for about, I'd say it takes about maybe 10 minutes to walk far enough away from this thing to where it's just it's a thing in the thing in the past now. What would y'all like to do? Hmm. It is. There it is. Uh... Well, where do we go from here? Uh, let me think here. I gotta get into, gotta get into the zone here. <laughs> Just to remind you of your surroundings, you're, you're all battered pretty good. Hayes, you specifically, you are, uh, your face is bruised and a bit bloodied, and you just, you look. You look you're pretty worse for wear. Doy is not doing too hot. Stab's pretty wounded, and he's carrying Lulu in his arms right now. It is absurdly hot, uncomfortable, and dry all around you. Well, um, <clears throat> it seems as though we've ended up precisely where we were supposed to. What do you mean by that? Really? That's the follow-up question to the harebrained scheme we just tried to enact with a random devil demon that we just met who could not stop smiling and who was very anxious to bail on us at any given moment. This is precisely where we deserve to be. Thank you. Nice. And I'll Not just wrong. kind of continue, like, just kind of trudging along. You're not wrong. The plan, as it were, didn't go quite as it should have. And it was more of a loose outline. Well, that too. Uh, Jamie, I'd like to make a check real quick to make sure we're not being followed. Sure. Um, yeah, go ahead and make a perception check. I'll see you turn around and you, you look behind you and just kind of narrow your eyes a bit and then off to the sides, just trying to see if anyone's on your trail or you're being stalked. Um, you, you don't, you don't see anything, um over the small hills surrounding you or in the distance. You don't even see the, the keep anymore uh, that you had tried to raid earlier. Right now, it looks like just you guys out here. Now what? Walk back to the motorcycles we left at that, uh... Ruins? How far back was that? <laughs> Stab takes a deep breath and sighs and says, I don't know, man. It took like an, an hour to get here from there. And that was in, that was in the car, you know? And now, now, we're, now we're walking. Do we even know which way we're walking? 
would it matter? Doesn't Avernus change all the time? I suppose that's a fair point, yes. Well, people down here seem to be able to navigate somehow. Well, Smiler didn't feel particularly uh, charitable with that information. But to be fair, we also didn't ask him. I can navigate pretty much anywhere on the material plane. But here, I don't even think it would be worth looking. I'll just kind of pull out my, my compass, and I assume it's just either doing completely nothing or spinning like a helicopter. Uh, it looks like it's just spinning occasionally. Like, it'll start pointing in a direction, then just 180s completely, and then east, and then slowly west. It is not reliable in the slightest. Yep. I'll just close it, put it back in my pocket. Um, I'll... so, I, th I feel like we should collectively just pick a direction and hope for the best, but we need to be in agreement. If we're going to die of hunger out here, it should at least be a group decision. I know of hunger probably won't be our worst or the most likely outcome. To be honest, it's the least preferable for me. If I'm going to go, you know, I'd prefer to go out in a manner like Smiler as opposed to slowly withering away. Well, I've got plenty of rations here in the bag, and once I've had some time to study up, I can always start making more of those good berries we've used before. Well, and I just kind of take my hands and I'll just kind of point in like three different directions. What do we think? Way A, B, or C? I'm used to navigating by familiar looking trees, but we seem to be short on those. Uh, let me think about this a second. If we look, so when I pointed, it was like 90 degree turn to the left and go that way. Continue straight and go that way. 90 degree left to the right and go that way. Knowing that what's behind us is the, uh, the camp at some point. Uh, is there any kind of distinguishing, not not recognizable, but is there anything that's like even remotely different that I s would see in those directions? Is, or is it like over here, it's like canyony. Over here, there's spikes that come up out of the ground. And over there is just a dust storm. Uh, minus the dust storm, uh, the first two were actually pretty accurate. Uh, what you see on the imagery, there are spiked cliffs and whatnot. Uh, in the distance, and sometimes there's a deep gorge or a canyon just a, just a little bit off, maybe to your, what you hope might be west, or in your case, maybe just to the right, to the left. It's not too different where you are right now. Stab, do you remember driving through any of this? Stab gently sets Lulu down and kind of just starts looking in all directions and sighs. And I'm going to have him make a check. see looking around at the terrain it looks like he's trying to take it all in and then he turns to you doy and says man i don't i don't know i just i just just keep going straight you know like we the, the fort was we haven't turned yet i don't i don't think if we keep going forward we'll get there right I'm gonna glance at the rest of the party to see what they're looking like. I'm just uh, smiling. Oh, well, you got, uh, you got the, the map too. You could use the map, right? That is fair. Well, 
We could try. Yeah. All right. And so I'll reach into my pouch and I'll grab this insane map. <laughs> and I'm yep. going to go down, like, just kind of on my knees and just spread it out across the ground. Because I just don't have the strength to hold it out in front of me. And before you lays a large spread of uh, what you've mapped so far, a few things named on there and then a bunch of details and odd graphics. And just in a desperate bid to find any information, I'm just going to put my finger on it and say, where are we? Make a wisdom savings throw for me, Ace. So, you pray, place your... Did you put your finger on the map when you did that? Or did you just ask it? I did. Okay. So, when you put your finger on the map and say, where are we? You kind of close your eyes tightly and tense up. You remember having uh, an experience with this map before when you tried to navigate something on it. But this time, you don't feel anything just I think last time paralyzed you you don't feel your body stiffening up or anything this time but instead your finger starts to slowly drift on its own until it starts heating up almost to where it hurts and it stops on a single point right there hmm I'll leave my finger exactly where it kind of stops. And I'll say, I don't know if it's the blood loss, the lack of food and water, or if I'm just slowly losing my mind, but I'm pretty sure that this is where we are. And I'll kind of look around. Do I see anything on the map that I could even vaguely think is is corresponding with what I'm looking at? The only thing on the map that you could see that would help you in the slightest of where you're at is you know that Bitter Breath's camp was on the edge of some sort of river or ravine. There seems to be one fairly close to where your finger ended. So, if we are here, and Bitter Breath's camp was along this ridge line here, that means the opposite direction is that way. Uh, and maybe we'll end up back at the Tower of Erm. Perhaps we could convince Mordenkainen to give us an extended stay in the business forest. We are bringing plenty of extra demon ichor. Worth a shot. What do we have to lose at this point? I'll look over and stab. He, uh, when you look over, he's already picking Lulu back up, and he's just kind of looking back at you. and says, what's up, man? Ah, just joining us. Okay, uh, we're going to go this way. And I'll just point in the opposite direction, like w what I would best think would be towards the Tower of Erm, or at least in the direction of the lake that it's on compared to where I think we came from. Okay. You point in a direction that uh, hopefully you think is away from the direction you came from. And uh, what, what would you, what, are you, are you traveling that way or what are you doing? Uh, yeah, I'm just going to start shambling that way unless somebody tells me otherwise. Um, I am, as, I, as I'm going, uh, I am going to keep an eye out for anything that could potentially be used as shelter where we could potentially 
take a nap. Okay. Everybody else? Oh. I guess we're yeah. falling in. Yeah, we're. I'm. I'm pretty much just gonna be in line. Uh, kind of. Sh- uh, probably. Well, I guess at this point. Yeah, I was say we're all pretty beat up. So. Yeah, I'll be shambling right alongside. Okay. So you fur- furl up your map. Haze and stow it away and start heading in what you hope is the right direction based on what you just looked at. And uh, you're kind of glancing around for shelter, and it looks like fairly in the distance, a few of these cliffs around you may very well be able to serve that purpose. Uh, Not a lot of them have overhangs, but it looks like you might be able to squeeze under one or two in the distance. Speaking of which, shortly after you start walking... Uh, you're a bit surprised when you feel something moist land on your arm and then something again slightly on your shoulder and just turning and looking around you you could see it started to rain is it blood when you examine it more closely it looks like it's solid red. No, 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 no. Not just regular no. Literally hell no. I, I've had a no, no. And I'm gonna take my, my arms and just kind of raise them to my side and I'm gonna cast a uh, storm guide. And if it's raining, I can make the rain stop falling in a 20-foot radius around us. Okay, so you start to channel this spell, or, yeah, I guess it's kind of a spell, Storm Guide, and the rain stops, it's just just a little sprinkle right now, starts parting all around you and your group instead of landing on you, and right when you finish this cast, you notice that the rain has started to pick up and become a bit more erratic you see the ground just lightly sizzle occasionally with these larger drops falling around you it looks like you may have just in the nick of time stopped from getting hit by a downpour of something you're not sure but it definitely doesn't look safe I'm just gonna keep my arms raised to the side Um, how far away does that shelter look potentially it looks like it might be about about 500 feet out. I'll be honest, I, I don't know how long I can hold my arms up like this, so maybe we go to these cliffs over here where it's not raining blood. Read. Uh, out of curiosity, if I were to look around, which of my cohorts looks the worst off physically, Jamie? Uh, Other just... than Lulu. Just staring at Hayes, he <laughs> definitely looks in a bad spot. I would like to cast protection from poison on him, just in case this stuff is poisonous and he starts to get some on him. Okay, and you do so. Is that a touch spell or a range okay. spell? Sal, uh, thank you. Touch. All Sal, right. with all of the gifted subs. Oh, wow. Thank you, Sal. Baka. Yeah, it is raining. Um, So you feel a shoulder. You feel a shoulder. You feel a hand on your shoulder, Hayes. As you feel this aura of protection engulf your body, Doya gives you a quick nod. Maybe, uh, let's double step now? Uh, y- yes. Uh, this way, and I'm just gonna keep my arms held out, uh, and I'm even gonna. T- conjure my uh, mage hand to help me just l- keep one of my hands lifted up. Okay, so you st- you, know, you guys start jogging in this downpour that seems to be getting uh, more and more intense as you go, and you hustle as quick, well not as quick as possible, but at a safe, safe pace without falling down or anything like that, towards this overhang that you can kind of get under. And without any issues, you guys make it. 
and get out of the what looks to be blood downpour. <laughs> Just another day in Avernus. Fantastic. As you look around at the landscape, it looks like none of this is uh, pooling up on the ground anywhere. It seems to be seeping in all the cracked dry spots whenever it hits the ground. And oddly enough, just looking at it, it doesn't even look like the ground is really getting soaked. It almost like the ground is just completely absorbing whatever this is instead. Stab sets Lulu down <laughs> gently, like, at the back of the recess that you guys are under, and just sits next to her. How, like how well to... covered are we from the rain? The recess you're in is deep enough to where it doesn't look like any can splatter on you, unless you maybe go back about... Just to make it easy, we'll say it's about a 30-foot overhang you got above you right now going out and wide. Once we uh, all safely kind of get under this overhang, I will let down my uh, storm guide and just let the let the rain fall straight down. OK, you lower your arms and uh, take refuge under this small makeshift shelter you got and just watches the blood rain starts pouring down just harder and harder. I'll, like, literally collapse on the ground, like, sitting down, and I'll just put my back up against the wall, and I'm just immediately going to close my eyes. If I die, I die. I don't care about my <laughs> surroundings right now. Elgin, Doya, what are you two doing? I want to stick near the uh, entrance, uh, and I, there's two things I'd like to do. First, I'd like to attempt to hide, since it seems like there's heavy rain outside. So I'm going to use Mask of the Wild. Okay. Feel a little bit more the other is, hidden in your recess. I would like to try to keep a watch for anything that might be behind us. All right. And Elgin? Uh... I guess uh, I'm going to take a moment to try to heal myself. And there you go. I will, I will take that. So I can get myself at least somewhat closer to uh, back to normal. You heal yourself up a little and... bit when your wins. Uh, does anybody else, I guess, uh, looking at everybody else, can I see, can I tell if, uh, Hayes is any better or worse for wear? Uh, I'm wonderful. <laughs> Hayes is, he looks about as bad as he was just a couple minutes ago. He's sprawled out on the ground right now with his eyes closed. Mm. He'd be in a bit of a daze. He, he looks very wounded. Uh, Stab okay. is mm. definitely not doing too hot. And Dewey is doing, I guess, better than most. Have you seen then, the uh, the character, like the mud, blood, and damage uh, that happens to the Baldur's Gate 3 characters if you keep them out too long? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like like that? That's what it yeah. looks like. That's a good, that's a good okay. reference. That's a good... Okay. So uh, then what I'll do is uh, I will... I'll give that one... Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll give... I'll give... Uh, I'll give that one to... Uh, to Hayes and uh, and I guess Stab can have that one, <laughs> <laughs> or flip him. Who knows? You know, Stab's not here. He can have the six, and Hayes can have the nine. I kind I kind of just open my eyes a little bit and look down at the couple of uh, wounds that are that are closing up, the burns that are uh, kind of cauterizing over, um, and I'll just look at, at you and give you just like this half energized like toothy smile <laughs> and then I'm just going to lean back against the wall that's fair that's fair that is incredibly fair uh, 
And then uh, I guess uh, I, I, I still have one more in the pocket, but uh, I'm going to save it uh, for a just-in-case scenario. Um, and then, yeah, I'm going to just kind of hunker down with the rest and um, I don't know, see, just see if we can wait this thing out. I don't know if uh, you said it's not, none of it's welling up, it's just soaking into the dirt. Yep. To the oh, ground, ground around us. Yep. Okay. Um. So we know we don't have to worry about uh you know getting getting flooded out or anything. Cool. Um. The ground and... is a vampire. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> 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 but no, <laughs> I'm about to say you know where I feel like we should be at a a, a rave at the beginning of Blade One. What, uh, where we should be. I feel like we should have like a, a rave going on and the you know, vampires just dancing, dancing and whatnot. But uh, that's not what we got. And um, you know, that's that's a whole other game altogether. I I guess you know, with all the blood falling from the <laughs> sky, would I be able? Would it be too difficult to try and discern anything going on? Because he it, says it's coming down fairly, fairly steady. It's coming down steady-ish. It seems to be just slowly getting harder still. Okay. Um. I want to try and see. I guess. I guess look around, see if there's any. Well, Stab looked around earlier and didn't see anything terribly wild or, or out there. But um, I guess I would like to you. Know, See if I even notice anything like going on out there in the rest of the uh, in the rest of the world. Uh, there's, but like I mean, clearly we're the only idiots out here, like hanging out in a in a, in a blood rain and a blood downpour. But uh, fucking tourists, you're right. <laughs> like, do I do I notice anything beyond the rain? It's fairly difficult to even see through the rain at this point, mm -hmm. but. Besides the static rocks, cliffs, and gorges you've passed so far, you don't see anything else out there right now. Okay. Then, uh, yeah, he's just going to sit down and lick his wounds and, uh, I guess, hopefully wait this thing out. Out of curiosity, are you sitting near the entrance or towards the back? I'm going to sit near the entrance. I feel like I'm probably, other than you, I'm probably the, the most okay person as far as uh, uh, health goes. <laughs> I'm actually going to uh, tell you uh, maybe maybe take a step or two back from the entrance. I'd hate for your armor to uh, give off a glint. Let things know where we're at. Uh -huh. That's fair. That's fair. I'll, uh, I'll take a seat back but uh, I'm going to kind of put my back up against one of the wall, uh, one of the surfaces and just kind of lean for a little bit okay so i guess uh if if do and if doy is keeping an eye out i'll probably just take a rest as much right. as i can get are y'all taking a short rest or are you trying to take a long rest or are you just chill until hopefully this blows over i think we're going to start a short rest and see if this thing blows over Okay. If we short rest, and if it if it passes in the time of a short rest, maybe then we'll go from there. So about an hour goes by, and we'll go ahead and crank this to its peak. So an hour passes, and this stuff is just a downpour, and it's gotten loud as the rain just comes down harder and harder. But after that hour... It seems to be fairly consistent now and not getting worse. Uh, mm. But it's definitely coming down exceptionally hard. Whatever this stuff is, it already looks like it may have been a bit dangerous to get too much on you. At the speed it's falling at now, it looks like it may have been a death sentence. Am I able to see it like react with any plants or animals or even the ground outside? There is... Um, I guess it'd be too hard to see right now, but on your way in when you're rushing, there is a tiny bit of fauna on the baseline of some of these cliffs, but you can't see at all uh, what's there now. It's too thick. Uh, 
You want to keep waiting? Uh, we've done uh, an hour so far, right? That is correct. Uh, mechanics question. Since I'm just sort of kind of looking out, does that count as a short rest or not? Uh, if you're on guard, you can't be resting at the same time. That's what I figured. Elgin, you rested up enough to take a watch? Uh, yeah, yeah let me do a... Let me take a... Uh... I'm going to roll hit die, too, while we're on. One, two... Uh... Stab is going to do the same. He's just going to roll three of his hit die. Actually, let's make it... What's his con mod? That's another... A six. That's enough. Uh, so yeah, short rest. There you go. And Stab also just tends to his wounds in that brief period. So yeah, I can take a, I can keep a watch. All but right, I'm going to, I'm gonna want a long rest because I, I literally have one spell left, <laughs> and all of my abilities are tapped. <laughs> And have been for like the last four games, I feel like. <laughs> Alright, so Elgin, you step up, and Doya, you're gonna go sit down. Is the, the intention to try and wait this out still with another short rest? Yeah, uh, at least on my part. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hayes is trying to do some recovery as well. Um, that's a lot of threes. About. Another hour goes by, Elgin, with you at the helm now. And the storm, fortunately, isn't getting worse, but it seems to does not be uh, lessening either. Yeah. Ugh. Um. You know what? I want to... So, like, where we are, you know, where we're taking shelter, would it be feasible... To, um, would it be feasible for me to be able to say, I don't know, collect some of this blood, whatever it is? What would you use to do it? I mean, I totally have a flask. So you would hold the flask out in it? Oh, no, I would just set it out there and just let it collect. Oh, I got you. <laughs> um, I'm just going to, like, set it out there, leave it open. It's like a holy water flask, so it's not like a an alcohol flask. I presume it's uh, just a, uh, a little container thingy thingy. Is there holy water in it currently? I mean, I can pour it out. I'm not above it. I can always make more. <laughs> it looks like it. if you wanted to, you could you could definitely do try to try to do that and set it out there, see if you can collect a little bit of whatever this is. Okay. Actually, you know what? Before I pour any of it out, I do want to test something. Sure. I'm gonna pour out some of the holy water. I'm gonna pour out like half of it. And then I'm gonna set it out there to collect. I wanna see what happens when the two mix. Okay. So, you're going to pour some out into the rain? Mm hmm. All right. You uncork your holy water flask and kind of just fling your arm a bit, trying to throw some out onto the ground. As, as soon as it leaves the bottle and it enters the atmosphere where the rain is, mm -hmm. smoke just all in your face, almost like a fog cloud, just, whoosh, just hisses right in front of you. When it mm -hmm. hits the ground, it seems like even more smoke just starts pluming out of it in a wide direction, like about five feet wide, but disappears within maybe about two seconds. Mm hmm Okay. Now, uh, with, uh, with it out there, I want to, like, just leave the flask out, 
and just let it collect. See if it, see if let it, since we're gonna be sitting here for a while, I'm sure in that time frame it will collect a fair chunk of this stuff. This is pouring down as much as it is. Are you emptying um, out your holy flask? Yeah, I'm emptying it out. Okay. You empty it out and uh, carefully just place the flask out there and step back. Mm-hmm. And uh, the glass seems unaffected by what this is. It definitely looks like it's about to tilt over repeatedly, but it's able to stay upright. It starts pooling a little bit of the stuff inside of it. Okay. And then I'll, once it looks like it's full, I'll, I'll uh, retrieve it just for curiosity's sake. Okay, you uh, retrieve it back. You have one mm. deep red tinged flask now. Awesome. <laughs> and then no. what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it inside Doya's uh, uh, bag of holding. <laughs> <laughs> um, you did that just so I had to do the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> As you're uh, walking this flask over to Doya, um, mm-hmm. you definitely get a get a sense about this flask of whatever mm. the, whatever its contents are. It strikes you as a, like almost like you could sense something within it. Make a oh. what kind of check would this be? Make a survival check. Okay. Uh... Or medicine, whichever <laughs> one's better. We'll take that. Uh, honestly. They're the same, so it wouldn't. It, the result wouldn't be any different. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the result would be any different. <laughs> so you you feel like there's something definitely more to this rain than it just being uh, potentially scalding or whatever to it, but you you can't really make heads or tails of it as is, and you place it in Doya's super bag. Awesome. Mask of yeah. deep red tinged substance. Yeah, that works. <laughs> flask of stuff and things and you estimate a weight for that for me Jamie how much is a weight we'll say uh, yeah, do, so do the, one. the holy water flask itself is one pound yeah just do one pound with water yeah. I don't suppose I would be able to estimate the cost of this as well <laughs> I'm afraid not at the moment <laughs> Priceless. Probably tree fitty. <laughs> tree fitty? I like it. I'm I'm just completely zonked out. No nobody can tell me shit right now. I'm against the wall. Just out of it completely. Yep. He's done. exhausted. Stab's just kind of looking out at the rain as well. And then uh, he kind of calls out to Doya and Elgin and says, hey, so, what, so what, what, what are we doing here, guys? Are we, we going gonna to try to go through the rain again? Make Hayes do the arm thing? That was pretty cool. I don't think that's wise. Oh, okay. And can I make an estimate on when I think the, this rain's going to end? I mean, yeah, go for it. Uh, I assume I need to roll, like, a nature roll. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Go ahead. Make a nature check. Let's see if you can tell when the storm's going to clear up. You have no I don't idea. even know this is going to be right. What, you but... don't even... You, you can't even tell if there's clouds in the sky with the way it's coming down. It's... You have no I'm idea. I'm going to emphatically say, just because I'm doing it, it's definitely going to stop raining in, like, 15 minutes. Stab. We'll be fine. Oh, okay. Good. Good. Um, I'll be ready. I'm just, I'll just be sitting here. He just kind of looks over at Lulu. Are you guys waiting 15 minutes now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, honestly, for me, uh, just because of how, like, I, I, I think literally at this point, I feel like not speaking for anyone else i haven't had a long rest in days was what it feels like for me as a character i I can only imagine what it actually is um i feel like i I, like elgin has lived off of short rest and (laughs) i would imagine that he is very tired and wants to actually sleep so the longer we stay here 
is perfectly fine with him, uh, even though he hates it here. <laughs> How long have we been here so far? Uh, you've been here two for hours. about... Yeah, it's been two hours, and we're getting to two hours and 15 minutes here. So I am uh, about then two hours and 15 minutes into my long rest that I've decided I'm going to take. <laughs> <laughs> He's like... That's it. <laughs> He's just been, it. been laying there. He's he's not watching anything. He's just keeping doing. He's watching back his eyelids is what he's watching. <laughs> <laughs> and Stab will say, guys, I, I think Hayes is just kind of. I think he's just trying to sleep. Should we just sleep? I just nod it. I just nod it. Stab and just like, <laughs> I think we better had. Oh, all right then. And and Stab lays out his little little small bed roll. Oh, is anyone else taking a long rest, or is it just Stab and Hayes? Uh, I mean, I'm going to take one as well. I figure at this point, it doesn't seem like anything that would be out here would want to be out in that stuff, so I feel like we we stand a better chance of getting a good night's sleep as opposed to not anywhere else. Uh, so, yeah, I'm taking a long rest. Okay. I'm going to stay on watch another hour or two. See if the rain changes anymore. Yeah, cause I kind of want to see if right? it, uh, I can do the trance thing, but right, that's right, right. four hours. All right. Well, Elgin, you uh, step back into the little recess shelter you've stowed away in, and um, I suppose try to get as comfy as you can. It's going to be exceptionally difficult, but uh, yeah. You lay. Do you have a bedroll or anything like that? Uh, it would be, t I mean, honestly, I don't remember. I feel like we put a lot of shit in the uh, bag of holding. I don't remember what went and what didn't. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff in there, including yeah. three bedrolls. Okay, then there you go. Uh, <laughs> you pull a bedroll out of that bag. All right. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's going to help. I promise you that's going to help. So you, uh, you lay yeah. out on that. And Doya, you kind of just, kind of just watch out in the, the rain for a while as everyone else starts just trying to rest. About how long did you say you wanted to watch for, Doya? I want to watch for two hours, but I really want to know what the weather's doing 15 minutes from now. 15 minutes from when you said it has, hasn't changed in the slightest. Mm. Yeah, uh, what has happened, I guess, over the next two hours then? Uh, over the next two hours, you've actually seen the, the rain let up just a little bit. Does it look as thick? anymore but it's definitely still coming down pretty hard and i make another estimate on when i think the rain's going to stop just you for my own sake make as many estimates as you want can i can i have a ultra ultra long rest plus because it's raining outside and it reminds <laughs> me of being on the ocean and i'm just sleeping like a baby oh there is a there is an effect after this uh, this long rest i promise you um, Doya, you, um, uh, I mean, you could tell just based on how the rain's looking, it seems to behave similar to normal rain, and you can see its thickness getting a little bit thinner now, implying that maybe it's getting around to the end of itself. Satisfied with my updated weather, I think I'm going to start finding my, uh, way to, uh, a meditative trance as well. Okay. You ain't no meteorologist. And you go into a trance. And all of you are now resting out under a large rock in the middle of Avernus with some sort of red death liquid raining from the sky. Hours and hours go by. As the rain kind of lulls most of you to sleep, you guys do not gain the benefit of a long rest. The other things happen first. First thing that happens, you recover all your spell slots. The second thing that happens, you recover all of your hit die. You do not recover any health. And I need all of you to make a constitution savings throw. But I'm sleeping. This is, uh, this is while you sleep. This is, this is happening. 
uh, what, uh, uh, Doya would get the, well, as everyone else would, I would imagine, since I'm assuming we're in close proximity, uh, would get the benefit of, um, your aura, the, right? uh, yeah, yeah, my but aura. That's does, the thing I was trying to think of. That so does, plus five. Definitely does count here. Um, Okay. All of you succeeded on this check, so you can remove one point of exhaustion if you had it, or don't gain any exhaustion if you're already not exhausted. I think that helps Stab uh, specifically. Yeah, Stab was exhausted, I think. He is yeah. a-okay now. Uh, I need you all to make one more savings throw, a wisdom savings throw. Ooh. Oh, man. We smart guys. again. Mm-hmm. We the wise crew. Wisdom, his plus is a zero, so he's, he's getting plus five. Wise ass. <laughs> I'm about to say he's a wise ass. <laughs> uh, make that a 12. Well, that, the plus five is with your aura. He has no, Oh, shit. I didn't, I didn't even no see that. no bonuses to his. Oh, his wow. Man. Hashtag sad trombone. Well, st Stab's <laughs> not here, but I'll, I'll word it as if he was. Stab... During your rest, you have a few nightmares, and you, it affects you deeply. When you start to awaken, you feel a bit different. You feel a bit more reserved, a little less kind. Your alignment shifts to true neutral instead of neutral good. Oh, oh, you guys are going to have a talk tomorrow. Uh, you all start waking up after this rest. Hours upon hours have gone by. No one was on watch. No one was there to wake anyone up or know exactly when eight hours or four hours or whenever was up. So you guys just rested for a while, hoping for the best, as you did not have a guard. Fortunately, in this case, nothing crazy is standing in front of you when you all start to wake up. Uh, and the rain has stopped. Blood rain protected us. <laughs> Thank you, Blood Rain. <laughs> you wake up back to that uh, familiar sight of just rocks upon rocks in the horizon. You can see a couple of large winged creatures flying overhead, way too large to be just birds, or maybe even whatever's above birds. And it's just as hot and crappy feeling as before you fell asleep yesterday. You're all also quite hungry and thirsty at this point. Who woke up first? Um, I would say all of you kind of just started just coming to around the same time. Uh, how are we on? Uh, I was going to say, depending on what everyone's exactly got as far as uh, uh, rations and the sort. Uh, I was going to say, because I imagine by now we're probably starting to get a little light on that sort of thing. Uh, I can create, uh, food and water if we need it. Interesting. So, so you too have that here. ability. Why is it so bright? See, gentlemen, I told you, 15 more minutes, the rain's done. We're good to go. How about that? Uh, <laughs> what is it? What is this? I feel like it's a whole other year. Uh, I do feel a bit better. Uh, and I'll kind of like look down and see, you know, some of my wounds have at least stopped bleeding. Uh, <laughs> you, um, you actually hear Stab start to exclaim something right after he wakes up as he uh, calls out to you all and says, G guys, guys, look, look, look at Lulu, look. When you all glance over, Lulu seems to be glowing a bit brighter now. Mm. She's close to, to waking up. 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 Look at this. Is this is this This is probably not good, right? Is this bad? Is it a good glow or a bad glow? Um, I'm going to You know what? You know why not? Yeah, cuz we haven't I haven't done this in a while. Um 
Let's let's use uh, divine sense. I want to see. I want to use my divine sense in this, uh, like kind of focusing on Lulu, just to see what's happening. And while he's sensing that, uh, I'm going to. Oh wow! Yes, that's incredible, and that's so great. And I'll kind of just be slowly walking backwards away from this. That's so good. It, that's she's she's coming. She's fine. Stab seems to be just kind of looking at Lulu excitedly and uh, starts saying, "I I I heard you. Are you talking about making food? Make make some extra breakfast. She might wake up any minute, just in case." I will say. Um, Go ahead and link oh, your divine sense ahead. as well, Wait, Elgin. Oh, yeah, yeah, here, let me, I'm, I forgot to do that here. Let me, there you go. Um, Doya, do you want me to do the honors, or do you? Uh, I think your magic has been handier in battle if we get to that point. Uh, we still have rations, and the bag of holding but I think we might want to save those for tougher times and so I will go ahead and cast Goodberry what type of spell is that uh I was supposed to do that what is your spell modifier my spell modifier is I'm sorry your spell plus Attribute, uh, charisma, oh, wisdom, casting and modifier. Like, casting modifier. That's it. Uh, I got a plus five modifier, a plus nine spell attack, and a seventeen save. No, 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 not the number. The is it intellect or wisdom? Oh, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Or charisma? Oh, uh, wisdom. Make a wisdom check for me, please. I'm okay. a smart guy. You hold out your hand and start to cast Goodberry, and. It almost feels like your magic is kind of... It, it almost feels like it keeps trying to cut out on you, but you focus your mind, and you're making ten? Yes, it makes ten. Ten berries appear in your hand, although they don't look like what you're used to. All of them are discolored, and they look almost charred. Ah, uh, this again. I, I would like to try one... Well, before before that, let me, let me resolve oh, what Elgin did uh, with his divine sense. Uh, Elgin, you mm -hmm. cast divine sense, and you definitely sense some celestial energy very close. However, it seems to be very erratic. Like you can, and it's almost like you could feel it standing next to you and then distant, almost in the same moment. Hmm. Well, the good news, this isn't devilry going on here, so I guess there's that, but uh, whatever it is, it's, it's working very difficult. Hopefully, everything is as Hayes said. I'm I'm at this point probably like six feet further back. <laughs> Doya, what were Hopefully. you doing? With good berries. I really want to try one just to see if it's as bad as I think it's going to be. Sure, you you plop one in your mouth, and it tastes like you're chewing a piece of charcoal as soon as you put it in your mouth. It is uh, not pleasant. Fortunately, it doesn't taste like raw sewage or literal feces like many of the other things you guys have tried so far here but it tastes terrible all the same but its effects function you feel full after eating it and you heal one hit point all that for guys i mean you know that stuff that's good for you never tastes quite as good as the fun stuff and i will hand out berries to everybody uh to a head all right I'll reach out with my mage hand to grab them. Oh, Sta th thank you. I just wanted to make sure everything was fine back here. 
Stab will grab and three berries from you, Doya. Um, I was going to hand him four. Oh, he gladly takes four. And then yells out at Hayes. Hey, why are you being so far away, man? Huh? What? Uh, oh. <laughs> How did I get back here? Um, uh, I'll be re eating. And I just pop one of the good berries uh, in my mouth. Um, uh, mmm. Charcoal. My favorite. <laughs> yes. Thank you. And I'll just kind of like not turn my back, but I'm just going to kind of turn to the side and just start looking at like rocks formations on the wall. Just, oh, wow. This is inter it's interesting. Stab will eat one as well and immediately go back to Lulu and kind of crouch down next to her and put one in front of her. I'll I'll kind of glance back over towards Lulu. What's happening? What's up she, with that? She just seems to be glowing a bit brighter than she was the day before, as far as you can tell right now. Can I do any kind of, like, arcana check to see if it's any kind of magic I would recognize? Um... You could certainly try. Make an arcana check. From a distance. <laughs> from, from a distance. From a distance. <laughs> Uh, just yes, the charcoal. It's great. <laughs> All right. Well, you, yeah, you can't, you can't really tell. You can physically see what's going on, but as far as trying to sense whatever magics is happening to her, you have, you have got nothing but guesses. I'll, uh, I'm gonna pull out one of my uh, pittance. And I just want to uh, try and scrape into the rock formation on the wall and see if I can write anything, or if it's too too tough. You can kind of carve into it. Okay, I'm just gonna work on carving some stuff for a minute. <laughs> All right. Uh, Stab seems to be co just sitting next to Lulu, just almost like he's waiting. Doya and Elgin, what are you doing? I'm going over my notes and doing a few meditations to try to figure out what spells I'm doing for today. Uh, I'm going to be doing something along the same lines. Okay, so two of you are kind of going through your your books, trying to just get your spells in order, be ready for whatever the day has prepared for you. Hey, as you start carving into the wall something, and you work on it for, we'll say about, about ten minutes of this passes, and Stab uh, still seems to be just sitting next to Lulu, occasionally just patting her. And then uh, he does call out to you guys and say, Hey, she's uh, she, she's still not up yet, but it, it, whenever y'all want to go, I mean, I, I'll just carry her. I mean, I'm sure it'll be any minute. Look how bright she is now. What? Oh, uh, is she, like, noticeably, noticeably brighter than just a bit ago? No, she's still the same exact brightness. Amazing. Um, should we wait here and see if she glows more, or do we walk through Avernus with the giant flashlight on that we have no way of turning off? Stab uh, sort of looks back at her and then to you and says, uh, I could, uh, I don't know, I kind of cover her up a, a bit. I, I have, like, let's see. And he, he goes to his bedroll, and he starts kind of tearing it at the top part instead he normally would crawl into and just throws, like, a blanket over her, which just barely dims the light coming off of her and says, yeah, see? See, all covered now, so we're, we're good. I have more of a... Uh... Solid plan, I think. Well, gee, okay. So you got, if you got it, you come over here and do it then. You know what I'm saying, Doi? You got, let's see it. Once we uh, get back on the road, uh, I'm going to use Pass Without a Trace. Use some 
natural magic to hopefully mask our trail for a little while. So, what, does it like make us? Does it make us invisible or something? It. Nature helps to hide our steps. That's the easiest way to explain it. Stab looks to you, Hayes, and just says, "Hey, I hate how cryptic he is sometimes." <laughs> nah, it's it's all in. It's fine. It's fine. It's I, I mean, I could explain the mechanics, but then we'd be here all day. No, it's better. It's better pass without a trace. Is all. Is all I. I well, you know what? It, it doesn't even matter. I got a blanket on her. See, she's good. But you, you do your thing, and we, I appreciate it all the same. Being which, are we ready to get back on the road? And where are we trying to go? Um. I. Can I? I guess I, I, I kind of point the direction uh, that we were previously going, just kind of continuing in that direction. You said the uh, ground has been absorbing this uh, liquid stuff. Does it look like it's muddy or mushy or anything like that, or are we going to be good to travel on it? Doesn't look muddy or slushy in the slightest. All right. Um, I'll put away my, uh, pitten from carving into the wall, and I'll just kind of go to the edge of the cave, and I'm just going to kind of look up at the sky, to the left and to the right, and I'll turn back, I'll look at, uh, Elgin, and, oh, it's baby! Oh. Aw. <laughs> Aw. Aw. Yeah, Elgin can't I, hear you right do, now. He's in I his own exactly, mind. I do exactly that to stab. <laughs> uh, and then I walk out uh, into the uh, into Avernus. Stab kind of does a, a, a fist pump to himself. Says, I knew we'd get there someday. I knew it. <laughs> also, uh, you did you finish your carving, Hayes? I did. What, what was it again? Who's looking? Oh, well, I guess the stab will walk up and look. Uh, it's it's legitimately nothing. I was scribbling into the wall to look look busy. <laughs> he looks back at you and says, I, I like the affection, but you got to work on the art, man. That's like, I can't even tell what that is. <laughs> oh, it's, it's this, it's called abstract. It's all the it's all the rave, uh, up in uh, Icewind Dale. Oh, oh, well, I, I see that that's beyond me. But you know what? I, I, I just didn't appreciate him. So it looks amazing then. I appreciate you. That's sarcasm. I don't and like I'll, it at all. I, I, when he when he says that, I'll take my hand and I'll just lightly put it on his cheek, and just smile at him, and I'll turn and walk out into into Avernus. He kind of uh, mumbles under his breath when you start wandering away, Hayes. He says, damn, that was mean. Why did I... Whatever. And he falls behind you. I just walk off it. It's going to be a great day! <laughs> Elgin and Doya, are you following? Uh, yeah. Now that I've sorted my, uh, my prayers and whatnot. Um... I'll get up and uh, start following along. I'm probably going to be the last to pack up my stuff because I was messing with spells and things. Uh, once I run back up to the group, I'm going to go ahead and cast Pass Without a Trace. Okay, so you can't be tracked except by magical means. Alright, so, Doya, you weave this spell around you, and... All of you, uh, you you notice you're not leaving behind any more tracks or shuffling of the of the sand and, and dirt on the ground and whatnot. Uh, Doya seems to have cast a spell to make you guys almost unnoticeable. It's, um, 
Damn, Lu yeah, Lulu, I forgot her name for a minute. Lulu is still glowing, just as bright, but has a, a blanket over her as well. So hopefully that will assist in that. And you guys trek back out into Avernus. While we're well, traveling... Oh, go ahead. I was going to ask the party, what's our plan for pace? Are we trying to run it? Uh, That's what I was steady ask. march? Stealthy? I can't hear you. Uh, sorry, I had something in my throat. Um, <clears throat> we're good now. Uh, solid, steady march. And I will try to keep up, and I'll start moving with my little walking stick slash uh, quarter staff. <laughs> I I look back and see that, and I change it to just a st regular steady march. All right, you guys continue on then at regular steady march. Um, I'm guess I'm guessing we're just gonna keep moving till we see anything different in the landscape. It's literally yes. all we can do. Okay, you guys press on through the heat of Avernus. Uh, it doesn't take long, maybe about five to ten minutes to notice that whatever that rain did to the land, it certainly made it even more uncomfortable than it already was. It's you're already a bit short of breath while marching out in the open like this. Elgin, you are suffering extra hard in all that heavy armor. Uh, mm -hmm. It feels almost like you're being cooked inside of the suit you're wearing. I'm gonna. Um, I'm actually gonna stop <laughs> and uh, drop down to uh, one knee. I'm just gonna let everybody else kind of go ahead of me, and uh, I'm gonna cast fine steed <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> and uh, uh uh summon uh mifune my uh my war horse so you try to summon your war horse what type of magic is this on duration uh this is uh it would be well it would be wis it's wisdom based but it's uh as far as like the school of magic Mm -hmm. uh, I believe it is uh, summoning. Or no, conjuration. Conjuration. Make a wisdom check for me. Not save, just check. Just a check. Okay, gotcha. Uh, where is... There it is. Oh, wow. So when you kneel down, you you know you, you're traveling like this. This might be the death of you. So you hold out your hand mm -hmm. and start to conjure your war steed. In mid-cast, it's the spell just you lose grasp of it completely as it fizzles mm -hmm. out of your hand and turns to nothing. Mm. You've lost a spell slot, but you could try mm. again. Do we see him stopped and on his knee behind us? You would have seen him stop again on his knee. If you would have stopped to stare at him, that's on you, or kept going. He didn't say anything. Hmm. I assume I don't hear any clanking, so I'm going to turn around and go, uh, Elgin, you all right? <sighs> this heat. I hate it here. <laughs> yeah, you're I not getting my head at all. you? this accursed place. No. Uh, I'm fine. But the sooner we get out of this shithole, the better. 901 Avernus. <laughs> yes. So do you stand up? <laughs> He's going to actually try again. Okay, He's actually going to try again. And uh, I'll make the. Uh, uh, what's his face? The, uh, the, the uh, wisdom the check. Wisdom check. And the weather out here? Is it just like a stifling, <laughs> like humid, like gross, <laughs> wet heat with no circulation whatsoever or is there kind of uh you know is it like dust storm or wind kind of blowing against us or you don't feel in dust storm or wind blowing against you but you, you know that view like if you're walking on a road and super hot heat and everything just looks blurry non-stop yeah it's that in every direction currently sick Ugh. elgin same results you try to cast but your mm. magic just doesn't form uh, I, he just gets up and <laughs> shuffles along. 
All right, you you but dragging on. his very dra very much dragging his feet. <laughs> Staff's so, carrying a kind of heavy load. How's he holding up? If we were to look at him, you can definitely see his fat fe fe his fat his face just drenched. As you look back at him, he kind of he kind of raises his chin, almost like he's trying to look tough, and says, it j "Just another day in Avernus, am I right, guys? Right?" <laughs> It certainly seems that way. Yes. Um. Oh, damn it. Never mind. I'm going to start worrying about my uh, companions here and go, Elgin, stab. Do we need to uh, shift some weight around or anything to help you guys out? No. Um, uh, I mean, I, I I got Lulu. I don't worry, I got it. I'm good. If I were to inside him, does he look good? <laughs> uh, yeah, you can go to make insight check. I'll make the DC five. There you go. You pass. He <laughs> definitely does not look good, but he, it almost looks like he has a a bit of determination on his face. Like he feels like he feels like he needs to do this. Um, I'm gonna open up my my backpack and I'm gonna pull out my bedroll, at least like the blanket part of it, and I'm just gonna drape it over my head to try and just block out some of the radiation coming from the sky, <laughs> just for All a little right. shade as we walk. You you wrap your head up as best you can. Oh yeah, we we keep on. We're just gonna keep on trudging. We're going to keep on trudging, yes. We have no choice. I get it. All right. You all continue on. About an hour goes by walking in this miserable landscape. I need you all to make a constitution savings throw. Elgin and Stab do it with disadvantage. I love this place. But you do have your aura, I believe, on it. Yeah. Um, twenty-one. I'm I'm gonna use my inspiration because I don't think a ten is enough to do shit. Okay. I'm about to say you would have a fifteen. Oh. Yeah, you got his aura. Oh, I have your aura. Okay, mm. then I'm not gonna use my inspiration. Uh, okay. And that's twenty. That one. Uh, the heat is definitely weighing on all of you, but uh, no change so far. You guys keep marching on. Occasionally, you hear uh, what you assume is a squawk of another large creature flying above. Sometimes you see a pack of smaller winged creatures flying above with some sharp-looking tails. Nothing seems to be paying you mind as you all drag your feet across this wasteland, though. You travel for another hour. I need another Constitution Savings Throw. Same disadvantages. Do those uh, fine things look like rocks or anything that we've seen before? Uh, it's hard to tell. It was definitely large like one of those, but you couldn't see its head size, neck length, or anything like that. Apparently I'm paying way too much attention to them. <laughs> um, I'm going to take my, my bedroll and, and roll it back up and put it in my backpack, and I'm going to instead now take off my my coat, like my kind of outer jacket, mm -hmm. and I'm just going to kind of twirl it up and, and tie it around my head like a bandana instead. <laughs> All right. You start looking more the like, part in this heat. It's like hanging down the back. I look like uh, in vacation, Chevy Chase wandering through the desert. <laughs> uh, everybody except Doyas is still just just bearing this heat uh doya it's a it's starting to get a bit overwhelming for you as you gain one point of exhaustion got it uh i gotta remember where we put that but i got it uh go to conditions conditions that's right i'm about to say do uh, do any of the rest of us have any any change no no not yet okay okay that's right i you know what i was looking at it earlier i didn't realize doya had rolled it uh, crit fail. Oh. <laughs> so, 
still just just moving along this landscape. Not much has changed. There's a few less spike spiky rocky crags around you now, um, but you do all uh, feel a bit of a slight tremor under your feet. Kind of shakes just a little bit, like a like a small light rumble, and it's very consistent. And it seems to be a little bit more, I don't want to say violent, a little bit more intense every few seconds. What are you all doing? I'd like to look around and see two things. One, is there anywhere that we see near us that's potentially a, a big rock or a dead tree or something to potentially get behind? And two, do I see any clouds of dust rising up over the horizon in any given direction? Looking around you quickly, you do see a couple places where it looks like you could plant yourself up against, but while looking for that, you could quickly see what you believe is making that light rumble. As you look in the distance and you see a massive, large, tall something flying through the air with its tip almost dragging across the ground of Avernus, kicking up a large amount of dust. It's a little bit in the distance, but even from here, you can still feel it getting closer. I'd like to immediately cast Pass Without a Trace again. <laughs> All right, you uh, cast Pass Without a Trace again, hoping to stay a bit more hidden. But uh, hey, is you're kind of looking at this thing, and it's just, it's just you're locked onto it. And let me show you what you see. As you see a massive, what could only be ship flying through the air, a good distance away oh, no. as the ground rumbles more and more. Uh, uh, ah, okay, okay. Uh, and I'm just going to say, should try and take any kind of oh god and i'm just gonna run towards that little bit of cover that i think i saw it's a it's along one of these uh rocky outcrops it looks like you could get behind it if you want uh it doesn't look like this thing is heading in your direction it looks like it might be uh maybe a mile off from where you are even it's far away but it's enough to shake the ground you're on with as massive as it is Uh, I guess I will also run towards any sort of foliage or whatnot we can find. And, uh, once I reach any sort of cover, I'd like to try Mask of the Wild again. <laughs> you head where Hayes had, uh, was going to and kind of just duck behind this this outcrop, looking at this thing flying through uh, the sky of Avernus. And try to blend in with the wall. Elgin, what are you doing? Uh, <laughs> I'm sure I'm not moving particularly quickly these days, but uh, I'm going to try and get under, I guess, try and get under cover as well, or at least try and make myself uh, as undetectable as possible, given the circumstances. Okay, you do so as you take cover as well and just watch this thing just soaring through the sky. At least you think it's soaring through the sky. Seeing the spiky bottom of it almost dragging across the surface gives you a potentially different idea. But it doesn't seem to be moving your way. And it seems to be just crossing in front of you. Um, well, it looks slowly, but it is quite far away as it moves further and further to the side, just carving the landscape. Until the ground stop shaking a bit as it gets further and further away until it just becomes almost a speck on the horizon. Now what in the hell do you think that was? I'm gonna look up just back generally to everyone. Not a clue. It was, a, it was a big, big flying sword or something. Uh, 
I have a guess, but I don't like it. What do you think well, it is? Spit it out. If I were the Duke of Hell, I think I might ride around in something like that. So it's like I think that was Zariel? Royal carriage from hell. Zariel, Bell, any number of uh, dangerous folk that we've heard about. Or oh, maybe it was a friend. Maybe we should flag it down. Wait, we get we try to kill Zario, right? That's right. Maybe it's not Zario. Oh, are we? I've been uh, having it... one uh, questions about that myself. Yeah, I feel like we haven't talked about that. Should we talk about that? I mean. I don't think it's going to hurt anything for us to do so. I do I think we can... The assumption that we were going to stab her in the face when we had the first opportunity. You guys up to uh, talking and walking? I can walk and shoot bubblegum. Yeah, uh, easily. This is an easy walk. Then well, let's continue as we talk. Uh, but... Why are we after Zario? Because she's running hell? Because, or anything in particular? Uh, w wait, wait, I know this one. I know this. Because she, she, uh, she made the buddy. Yes, the companion. That, and, that's it. And it, she legitimately just dragged an entire city from our plane into the hells. Did she do so willingly? I mean, that's a, a dick move either way. If you get controlled and do that, I mean, that's, come on. What, what are you doing? We At saw those point. images. Go ahead, Elgin. No, continue, continue. We saw those images over in the past with Lulu here. I'll gesture towards Stab Hole here. She wanted to do good. But she bit off more than she can, she could chew at the time. Was El Terrell really her idea? Was dragging it to hell what she wanted? Or was she being controlled by one of those people that defeated her? I don't know. Why, why would she drag El Terrell you down You think here? she has a master? You're right. I'm like pulling do. the strings. And I wonder if we can defeat that master. We can maybe tidy up things here. Well, we know Bale is out there. Who else? I don't know. Wasn't he the one to, to cut say. off? Who cut off her hand? Can anybody remember that? Wasn't that Bale's influence? I think it was. That was uh, that was that that was that big guy. That that was uh, that was that was yeah, that was Bale, wasn't it? I think so. And we've met other. Um, oh, I she think that's was really pissed it. that she got abandoned down here, and now she's taking it out on the rest of the world. That may be. Well, but... the real question is, how are we to defeat her? We can barely handle the lackeys down here. Yeah, must muscle has a point. point. But I mean, look, we got a, we got a secret weapon though. Look, that's. And we, I got a friend right here. And he holds up Lulu. We have that, and potentially, if we were to expand our influence down here as well, you know, make good on our quest for Mordenkainen, bolster our own forces, be it with allies or with power, and then perhaps we stand a chance. Right. We can't just be the four of us against all of hell. Right. I mean, remember the, the demon bird? We made friends with him, like, right when we got down here. He's still out there somewhere. And, uh, there was a rather powerful gentleman that has an axe to grind with Bell as well. 
Yes. What was his name? We called him the Vrock, right? Uh, that's not the one I was talking about. That was uh, no Smell what the Vrock is cooking, right? He went to be a chef. <laughs> Perhaps he could cook for us. We have a good meal down here. No, that was someone else. You are referring to the the entity that we set free. I'm right. Yes. No, that asshole. One and the same. I mean, who is again. marching their armies against Zariel as we speak, I believe. Oh, he's mustering them, but I thought it, he was mustering them against Bell. Oh, Bell. They're all against Zariel. each other. I can't keep up. It is all I know is we came down here with the express permission, the express intent killing Zariel. We've got new information. And I still don't think that changes anything. I think it only adds more targets to the list. Wait, 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 wait. We wait. just need to use whatever influence we have with whatever situation we're in. If we're being stared down by this demon, we side with him until we kill the other demon. And then we move from that one to the next one and that one to Zariel. What, what, what was the what was the blood for though? We got blood, right? Or yes. Kynix can help us out. He wanted the blood. Yeah, but Just wait. how much help? Why? What, what's he we'll gonna see do? We'll when we get there. He, he was gonna. Go, go ahead. ahead. Uh. <laughs> I want to hear uh. from Hayes. Voice chat. <laughs> uh, at the very least, he could get us in the right direction to Zariel's blade. And perhaps, who knows? I, I don't know what it does. But if it's something potentially powerful, maybe we could use it to fix whatever the hell is going on with Lulu. We know what she could potentially become. I mean, Lulu's gonna be fine. Probably sooner than later. So, but she, I remember mentioning the sword. So that's that's probably important. Looking back at Lulu. Is she glowing like the same amount now that that big tower is moving away from us? Same exact amount. Okay. Did that tower look like it was maybe headed towards, or the the big claw thing? We'll call it the big claw thing. Was the big claw thing headed towards possibly uh, the tower of Mordenkainen? If you guys believe your direction to be the correct direction towards that tower, i.e. the opposite direction of Bitter Breath's Fort, that doesn't seem to be the case. But that's only if okay. everything you assume is correct is correct at the moment. It's definitely correct. We are correct. I believe you. This is the way. <laughs> <laughs> Well, regardless, I, I suppose we don't necessarily have enough information. Uh, at this point in time, I'm completely fine. If we, if Zario crosses the road in front of us, we try and stab her in the face. <laughs> but between here and there, if we find out something else, we can use that information to make an informed decision. That's all I ask for. Either way, I would like to eventually leave Avernus and, you know, sail on a boat again that's not on a river of blood and phantasmal forces. Regular water's fine. And I thought the sirens were bad. This place is awful. Read. Plus, we still have to get those citizens that are in El Terrell out. Indeed. Maybe, I don't know, maybe we, maybe we can, maybe get rid of Zario, gets rid of the buddy, and then uh, the companion. And uh, I, I don't know. 
That's, that's that, why I brought it here, right? That sounds as much of a legitimate thought as anything else we've said here in the last <laughs> 10 minutes. We just don't know. We don't know how any of this works. We don't know how this plane works. We don't know how this ground works. We don't know what, it rains blood. We don't know anything. All we know is I've got, and I'll kind of hold up a bag even though it's not in here. We have demon blood that we were tasked to go get by a powerful magic bald man. Was he bald? He wasn't bald. He could have been bald. bald. He was bald, I thought so. So we go give him the blood and we just see what that next step is. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. I'm okay with this outline of a plan. And if we happen to find another vehicle, again, another thing, we have no idea how it works. We have soul coins that run machine-powered vehicles. Who makes this? Elgin. Yes. You've been fairly quiet as you're... Uh, allies talk amongst one another. So I'm going to assume you were kind of looking ahead more than anyone else. Uh, can mm -hmm. you make a perception check for me? I can. Uh, uh, 11. While walking and talking, uh, the rocky outcrops have started to become far and few between as the terrain around you just starts to open up a long, flat surface. The best kind of desert. As you proceed mm. on, Elgin, in the distance, you see something, something small, fairly far away, and then a few other small things near it. There seem to be quite a few of them, and they're getting slightly bigger the more you walk forward. And I'm still rambling in the background. And another thing! I'm gonna... I'm going off. All of, like, I, I, at first, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a hand up. And uh, I'm gonna just kind of like just leave it uh, palm open. <laughs> and let me tell you something else about the Wandering Emporium. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck is going on there? Can we go back? I just could, don't even see your hand. I'm just too. <laughs> in... You actually bumped I'm into Elgin's to, back uh... while talking. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna just kind of look behind me and say. Uh... Ahead. I can't make out what it is, but something's coming towards us. I look with my special eyes. <laughs> uh, just looking in the distance, yeah, you see a bunch of small somethings approaching you. Um, they don't look too far away, but they're not moving very quick. As they, they get just a little bit bigger. Uh, on the horizon as they uh, get closer. What are you all doing? Like they're putting up a dust cloud or anything like that, like they're moving quick? Nope. No dust cloud. Okay. Any terrain? To you are potentially on an open field right now. I just stand right where we are then and I just <laughs> put my arms out to the side. <laughs> So you all just kind of hanging tight? Uh, there, I mean, there's nowhere else to go. It's it's all flat surface, so, uh... I guess what I... I what I do want to try is, um... I want to take several steps. Uh, a dozen... I'll, actually, I'll, I'll say uh, a dozen steps to the left. I just kind of want to see if whatever it is that I see off in the distance, if it looks like it's moving to match the direction that I'm going. When you take a few steps out to the side to see if it starts moving your way, it that doesn't seem to be the case, but the more you wait here, you see more of these little dots appearing on the horizon. It looks like there's a, a lot of these, whatever it is, but they, they don't seem to be moving quickly towards you, or you can't really tell if something's following you, but it doesn't seem to be the case. Okay. 
Um, I I would like oh, to ahead. try and uh, take out my navigator's tools, which is like compass, like a a little uh, telescope, just a little expandable telescope. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna take that out and sh- extend it, and I'm just gonna look through it and see if I can get a better look <laughs> at it. You do that, and you can absolutely get a better look at whatever the hell these are. And as soon as you put your spyglass up to your eye, you could see in plain view one of these. <laughs> hmm. Well, with the chicken. Meat's back on the menu, boys. <laughs> <laughs> um. Do you remember? Uh, do you remember that one time our vehicle broke down, and? Uh, those tiny little two-legged uh, creatures with the gaping maws came over the over the hillside. Remember that? Uh, I yeah. Remember. Yes, it's a good time. This should be a blast. There's like 50. And they're cluck, cluck, clucking all the way straight to us, it looks like. Do we assume they're hostile? Well, I mean, one did try to bite me. They seem to be getting fairly close now. And there's a a lot more than uh, just a few now, it seems. Almost looks like a herd. Well, if we're getting into a fight... Maybe it's time we start preparing. Uh, any objection? I, uh, yeah, no, the, no, no objection. Um, I'll reach into my about how long. Like, if I'm looking at this, how long do do I think we would have, like a a, a safe, a conservative estimate of how long we have before this herd is on top of us? Uh, with the distance they are right now, about. Three minutes. Okay. I'm going... I'm going to reach into my pouch. I'm going to pull out two pittens. I'm going to put one in the ground. I'm going to tie my rope around it, and I'm going to move to the next spot and put another pitten and tie the rope around it. And I'm going to make just a stupid little rope perimeter of like four... I've got 50 feet of rope. I'm not using all of it. I'm using maybe 20 feet. And just kind of making a little uh, trap. Uh, a little trip trip wire, I guess you would say. Uh, and once I've kind of secured that, I'm just going to take out my entire bag of a thousand ball bearings, and I'm just going to sling them out <laughs> in front of it as hard as I possibly can. Okay, where um, where is everybody else in relation to this? I'm guessing you step in front of everyone and do this? Yes. And that's 965 ball bearings that I just sling out of my, my pouch. Within Inside the rope perimeter? So I'm like standing right at the rope perimeter, and I'm going to throw them kind of mostly in front of it. I imagine some will kind of fall on the backside of it as well. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to throw them out. I'm going to assume these things are stupid as hell. Uh, that's what I'm banking on. I'm hoping that they are. Uh, and then I'm just gonna take, I don't know, I'll probably step like 15, 20 feet back away from it, and I'll untie my jacket from around my head and put it back, back on. Okay, I'll need you to draw that. Not right now, though, but just remember that moving forward, because we're gonna be, we're gonna cut out shortly here. But, uh, everybody else, uh, you see Hayes just just immediately hear him like do one quick grunt and take out these pittons and do this rope and throw ball bearings everywhere in front of the room. Is anyone doing anything while he's doing all this? Uh, while he does that, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to draw. I'm actually in, in I'm not going to reach. Uh, I'm not going to reach for, uh, my mace. I'm actually going to reach for my long sword. And when I do, I'm going to cast Elemental Weapon. 
And, uh... I'm gonna sheath it in cold. Or rather, not... That was more just for... I guess, oh, I get to choose which one each time? Weird. Anyway. Uh, but yeah, I cast Elemental Weapon. So there you go. Okay, with cold on it? Mm-hmm. All right. Um, I assume we're all just hanging out then? Waiting on these things? When they look to be about a minute out, I'm going to start casting something. They definitely look a minute out. Then I'm about to try to bring the lightning, and I'll start the spell Call Lightning. Where are you putting it? I'm going to put it just beyond the uh, our uh, difficult terrain. Just beyond it, your difficult terrain? What, is, what does that mean? Uh, Hayes here has uh, made difficult terrain with his ball oh, bearing Oh, beyond his ball bearing trap. Just right after it. So yeah. not like as far out as possible, but right after the trap. Yeah, right. I figure if they're going to slow up right there, I can start bringing the lightning on groups of them. Okay. I did that strength throw for me, uh, just to see how how far I could potentially toss them bearings. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, let me show you all what you're looking at real quick, and then uh, next time I'm going to have you guys all create all your areas you just did. As you stand there with your traps in this storm out, you see a flock of these creatures just marching your way. Uh, you should all be able to see how many now. But that's yeah. not actually where we're going to call it for the night. It's, we're going to set up our perimeter next time, because we got to get here a little early tonight. On Dragon Ball Z. So we did a little, mm -hmm. bit of, uh, little bit of survival this time. That rain, we made quick work of that. Fortunately, one of us are good with storms, so we were able to keep that off of us because that rain definitely had some bad properties. We uh, mm -hmm. saw a massive ship, we think, or maybe a weapon or a something. So what the hell was that? Who knows? And you guys found some chickens. So whatever you want to do with those. It looks like y'all want to kill the shit out of them, so that's what's going to happen next time. <laughs> so not too bad. Uh, a little bit... Uh, look at all these chickens. A little bit of a uh, hindrance traveling through Avernus at the moment without a vehicle with all the, the checks to exhaustion and whatnot. But you're okay. Only one of you is a little tired, right? We're going to build He's a old. meat vehicle out of the corpses of these hell chickens. <laughs> 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 well, um, I hope so. They're, they're definitely, uh, there's a lot of them. So with the, right, with the right stuff, I mean, you guys got it covered. With the wrong stuff, you know, anything can swarm. You know what I mean? So be careful about that. <laughs> Um, anyone got anything before I get us out of here? I don't. Okay, in that case, I'm going to drop some closing statements. Everybody, thank you for watching tonight. This has been another episode of Descent into Avernus, brought to you by Cloak and Stagger, and our wonderful cast here, minus Stab, who's just a picture right now, but he'll probably be here next time. Uh, we do this every Monday night at 8 p.m. Central, normally. That's the goal. Uh, we have another campaign in the works. I've had it in the works for a few months now. It'll be The Wild Beyond the Witch Light, which I have a full roster now. I have four people who will be in that. So look forward to that as soon as I get it up and going on Wednesday, same time, 8 p.m. Central. Uh, other than that, stream random games throughout the week. Check it out if you're bored. That's Cloak and Stagger on Twitch and Cloak Stagger on Twitter. And then if you look up Cloak and Stagger, you'll get a Tom and Jerry cartoon and then us on YouTube. So <laughs> take a look if you want to see what we got. We are um, number two. <laughs> All that being said, uh, yeah, thanks for being here again, and y'all have a good night. Take it easy. Bye, everybody. Peace.